A little over a year ago, I received the Elegoo Mars to review on my channel for you guys. And little did I know that this tiny machine would change the way I looked at resin 3D printing forever. Now, since then, I've moved twice and throughout that process, I've had downsized and upsized and downsized again. So I've had to get rid of quite a few machines, but the Elegoo Mars is one that I've held on to throughout this whole time and for good reason. I've tested out quite a few resin printers on this channel, but none have ran through as much resin and had as many successful prints as the Elegoo Mars. And at its price point of sub $300, this was the machine that I wanted to rush out and recommend to all my friends that had either not gotten into 3D printing but are interested in like D&D or minis or that have been FDM printing for a long time but were hesitant to take the dive into resin printing because of how complicated it was, how messy it was, how expensive it was, and just inaccessible. So this machine really transitioned a lot of people into resin printing. And I have a good feeling that a lot of you guys watching this video either got the Elegoo Mars as your first resin printer or have been looking at it. If you have an Elegoo Mars, let me know in the comments down below because I think there's a lot of us. Then late last year and early this year, Elegoo announced the Mars Pro, which was the same Mars that we all have grown to love, but with some upgrades to it. Some of those things included a matrix light source, which allowed for more uniform and quicker curing, a linear guide for the Z-axis, the USB, which had been moved from the back of the machine that a lot of people didn't like to the front of the machine, a carbon filter and silicone seal, which would help with any of the smell coming off of the resins and a new UI. Now, although these upgrades are awesome, they didn't make me feel like I was really missing out with my initial Elegoo Mars. Now, I could certainly see someone that was looking to get into resin printing or potentially add one to their fleet why the Mars Pro would be attractive, but for someone that already had the Mars, I was still really content with what I had. Well then a few months ago, Elegoo had to go and announce the Mars 2 Pro, which was the upgrade or the refresh that I had been waiting for, the one that I was really excited for, that I think a lot of you guys might see, and this might be the one that actually makes you want to upgrade from your Mars to this machine. So when Elegoo reached out to me and said, hey, we've got the Mars 2 Pro, we wanna know if you wanna test it out and kind of compare it to your original Mars, I said, hell yeah, I was really excited. So in today's video, we are gonna take a look at the Mars 2 Pro. Of course, we're gonna go over its features and what makes it different. And we are going to, of course, do some resin 3D printing. So I hope you guys are excited. And without further ado, let's get right into today's video. So most of the changes that set the Mars 2 apart from the original Mars are actually on the inside of the machine. Carrying over from the features of the Mars Pro, it has the same carbon filter to help with smells coming off the resin along with that silicone seal. The USB is still on the front and it has that new UI. Additionally, the 2 Pro has a proper linear rail for the Z-axis, a metal knob on the build plate compared to the original one on the Mars which is plastic. It has a sandblasted build plate that gives the prints improved adhesion a completely new light source that is supposed to provide further improvements as far as details goes and precision along with a slightly larger build plate of 129 by 80 by 160 millimeters compared to the 120 by 68 by 155 of the original Mars. Now, although all those upgrades are certainly welcome, they are not the biggest things that I am excited about. Just like the Mars Pro had some great things, those features that the Mars 2 Pro adds are also awesome. But to me, the biggest change that makes this machine completely different than the original Mars is the implementation of a monochromatic LCD screen. Now, Elegoo is by no means the first manufacturer to use this technology. They might actually be a little bit late to the party compared to some other manufacturers, but this is something that I am incredibly excited about. And with the Mars 2 Pro and their larger Saturn printer, they have finally implemented the monochromatic LCD screen. Now we've certainly covered what this means for your 3D printing on this channel, but for anybody that just hasn't seen those videos, Basically, a monochrome LCD screen allows you to have the light pass through the screen much easier, which in turn means that you can cure your parts a lot quicker. So let's say I think on my Mars, my standard cure time is around eight seconds. Well, the built-in profile for the Mars 2 Pro is around two to two and a half seconds. So I mean, we're talking somewhere in the ballpark of three to four times quicker print times, which is huge. And not only does it increase your uh, or decrease your print time, it also makes it where the LCD screen has a much longer life. So on the Elegoo Mars, let's just say for instance, it has somewhere between 400 to 600 ish hours. And this is a rough, uh, this is a rough number because it can be north or south of that depending on things. Well, for a monochrome LCD screen, you can often get thousands of hours. So as a better example, the standard Mars will give you hundreds of hours before needing to replace that LCD screen, while the Mars 2 Pro should be giving you thousands of hours. So for someone that needs to print out 
uh, batch parts, someone that's gonna be printing constantly, and someone that just doesn't wanna have to do very much maintenance like myself. Not that changing out the LCD screen on a Mars printer is difficult, but still, just not having to keep spares on hand is also a huge plus. So now that we've gone over the features and what really sets this machine apart, let's talk about setup for a second. Setup is actually the exact same as it was a year and a half ago for the original Mars. You put the build plate on the machine, you loosen the build plate, you remove the vat, you check to make sure the LCD screen is working, you put a piece of printer paper in between the build plate and the LCD screen, you make the printer home itself, you hold the build plate in place and you tighten the two screws on the knob of the build plate. And once you do that, you are ready to fill up your vat and start printing. Now, as far as accessories go, I believe this was the same way with the Mars, but it does not include resin. So make sure you pick up resin or you will be very sad looking at your printer and not being able to print anything. As far as accessories go, this thing came with a ridiculous amount of accessories. To list off some of them, there's Allen keys, there's filters, there's gloves, there's a cup, there's mask, there's a USB flash drive, there are two spare FEP sheets, there's a card with a 10% off my mini factory uh, models because my mini factory and Elegoo have partnered over the past year or so since I did that first review. So as far as other accessories go, you're pretty damn well covered, but make sure you pick up some resin uh, like I mentioned before. So the Mars 2 Pro also has a 2K LCD panel, so you don't have to worry about compromising any of the high detail or resolution that you've become so accustomed to with the original Elegoo Mars just by going over to the monochrome. And as far as resin goes, Elegoo did send me a bottle of their water washable skin colored resin, which I have not used. I've used their water washable resin before. I actually have a separate video on that. If that's something you're interested in, I will link you guys in the description of this video. Uh, but that's what they sent over and that's what I tested out on this machine. One thing I also noticed was on the VAT, there's actually now a max line, which on the standard Mars there was not. Granted, I was always very careful and made sure to not overfill the VAT in uh, extreme fear that I would do so. The build plate would come down and it would destroy the machine or make a huge mess, uh, best case scenario. Uh, but it does have a max line now, so in case there's anyone that has even become more paranoid than me about this, you know that if you fill the resin up to this point, you're good to go and it's not gonna spill everywhere. All right, well, now that we've got resin in our vat, how does this thing print? So I went ahead and plugged in the included flash drive and saw that there was one sliced file on there, which was the good old Elegoo Rooks, which has become a staple of their, it's their test print on every machine that I've reviewed or tested out of theirs. And it, just as I've expected and seen in the past, printed out perfectly. I will say though, seeing it on a monochrome LCD screen of theirs was not something I'd ever seen before. The original Mars I tested out obviously was not. The Saturn I tested out was a beta unit, so it was also not monochrome. So seeing this thing basically go down, cure for two seconds, and then lift up and go to the next layer was awesome. I've seen, again, monochrome screens before, but seeing it on an Elegoo makes me really excited. And uh, it, it was an incredibly fast print. It took just a couple of hours, and I had these ponds, or not ponds, these rooks sitting there on the build plate. They stuck incredibly well and they did take a little bit of oomph to get them off of that sandblasted build plate and into the tub of water that I had prepared for the prints. Now I was ready to slice my own prints and looking at the SD card, it looked like Elegoo partnered with a modeler over on my mini factory as there are a ton of miniatures on the SD card that just need to be sliced. So I opened up Chitubox and I added the profile for the Mars 2 Pro, which luckily is built into the latest version and I imported all of those minis onto the build plate. Since they were so small, I didn't bother to hollow them out and I just added medium supports from the default Chitty Box settings before slicing them. I was actually able to fit all the minis onto the build plate, which is something I was super excited about. And only a couple of hours later, I had a complete tray with all the tabletop minis hanging on there. All of those minis turned out perfect with the exception of the lion. I'm not exactly sure what happened to his back legs, but they were not there. And in my experience, a fail like that is often attributed to supports not supporting a part correctly. And that's when you'll print out like a figure and he's got a complete leg missing. So that was just what happened with the lion, but everything else turned out awesome and it looked really, really good. Once that was complete, I wanted to print something a bit spooky. It's getting closer to Halloween and my timeline is fluttered with people printing out pumpkins and all sorts of Halloween things. So I headed over to Thingiverse to see what I could find. I found a really awesome model called Pumpkinhead by MSG Miniatures that I sort of fell in love with. I downloaded him, scaled him up, hollowed him, added a drain hole and supports, and then sent him off to be printed. Once again, the printer cranked out this part and the print turned out awesome. He's really tempting me to sit down and paint him, but we'll just have to see 
in my list of other projects I have. So I'd printed the entire build plate and now I wanted to print something that would take up nearly the entire height of the printer. And one of my go-to prints that I've printed quite a few times is called Three Wise Skulls, which is like the see no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil, uh, the monkeys, but they are three skulls stacked on top of each other that look wicked cool and have a ton of detail. So I went ahead, imported that into Chitty Box. I scaled it up pretty much as tall as I could. I could have gone just a slight bit higher, but it was a really, really big print. And I hollowed it out and added a drain hole and hit print. Now, normally a print like this on my Mars would take me over a day to complete. It would at least take me a full 24 hours. And on the Mars 2 Pro, I started the print before I clocked into work and the print was done uh, less than nine hours later before I clocked out of work, which again is just, it's awesome. It is such a cool thing. Now, when this print completed, the, the top head of the skull was actually still in the resin vat because of how tall it was. So I had to kind of loosen it and then angle it, let it drip for a bit. And then I took it over to the water bucket. And this is when I got to see just how stuck things can get to this sandblasted build plate. Now, granted, I've had things get really stuck to resin printers before, and typically I tilt things or add some kind of supports or add a kind of like an angled uh, base to them. So that way the spatula can easily get underneath. But I didn't do that in this instance. And I really wish I had because I pried at the three wise skulls for a really long time and I could not get them off. And so what I ended up having to do was taking my little spatula, taking a mallet and just tapping it, which did release them, but did crack the side of the base um, at the same time. So this was definitely my bad and not the machine's fault. It was just doing its job of holding on to the printed part, but I learned my lesson and I definitely need to either play around with the initial burn times a little bit more to uh, figure out what's best for good adhesion, but not that level of adhesion. Two, maybe get a flex plate on it. Or three, just angle things in a way where they don't have such a flat base on the uh, build plate that makes it so difficult to remove. Other than my one whoopsie on the three wise skulls and the removal, the Elegoo 2 Mars Pro performed well, like I expected it to. It's really the same Mars that I have grown to love over the past year and a half now, but with a bit of a supercharge. Now, I still have absolutely no plans of getting rid of my original Elegoo Mars. I love that machine, but I certainly am welcoming the Elegoo 2 Mars with open arms, and anytime I need to batch print things out or I'm working on some kind of a deadline, it is going to become my go-to machine. Now, the price on the standard Mars seems to fluctuate a lot. I've seen it all the way up to like $270, $280, and at the time of making this video, I see it south of $200, which is pretty crazy. And the Elegoo 2 Mars is retailed, I think is at 300 US dollars. And at the time of making this video, I saw it around 290-ish dollars over on, uh, 290-ish dollars over on Amazon. So that is a pretty big difference. I think that the MSRP Elegoo mentioned was 300 on the Mars 2 Pro and 250 on the Mars. But again, I do see prices fluctuating a lot. And if you're patient, I'm sure you can grab one of the two on a good sale. And what I will say is this, if you are on a tight budget and you just want to be able to print as a hobby and you have no desire to you know, uh, do production parts or um, batch out things that you're going to be selling online, the Elegoo Mars is still a fantastic machine. The quality is phenomenal. The price is, is, the price is right. And there is a huge community behind it. But if you are somebody that is looking to expand or needs just to up their output or just wants to have the ability to crank out parts that much faster, well, the Mars 2 Pro at you know, $300 is a fantastic option that I think is going to become probably the same type of hype machine that the Mars was last year, um, you know, but this year with the Mars 2 Pro leading into maybe even next year. If you do want me to do a follow-up to the Elegoo Mars 2 Pro, let me know in the comments down below. I know with the original Mars, I did a follow-up maybe 30-ish days out after I had done a lot more printing on it. If you guys uh, want something similar, just let me know and I can probably do something in maybe 30 or 60 days just to follow up to um, some of the things I printed out and what my experience has been like at that point. So don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. I make a video every single Saturday, so there is always fresh content coming your way. And if you want to support the channel furthermore, I'll place links down below in the description to where you can check out my Patreon. There's some really awesome rewards and uh, it really helps support the channel. Huge thank you to all of my current Patreon supporters. You guys are awesome and I really appreciate you guys all allowing me to spend more time doing what I love, which is making content to share with you guys. And on that note, this has been Daniel from ModBot. I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video and I'm out. Peace guys.